Center for Remote Sensing and Spatial Analysis is a really interesting place because we engage in both research and teaching. And as a center, we actually often try to bridge between those two. We bring research projects into the classroom with hands-on classes like the Advanced Environmental Geomatics class. But we also hire students to work on some of the research projects here, both undergraduate and graduate students, shaping some of the research that we're doing. GIS, which is an acronym for Geographic Information Systems, is a catch-all phrase that we use that includes a lot of different kinds of computerized mapping. We may throw in GPS, which more people are familiar with, but we also include a lot of remote sensing and trying to simply capture spatially a lot of different phenomena that happen in the landscape. We're suddenly seeing how really informed decisions could be made about the landscapes, about the places we live, the places we play. And so many government agencies are suddenly now engaging in using this information to be more informed in their decision making. But all this is so new that we know very little about how, how it really happens. Does it change the decision making when you see one kind of map instead of another? Can we even digest these things? It's a very difficult problem to grapple with. And so some of the work we do here explores the implications of this. But a lot of the work we do here is also just trying to be as innovative as we can and find new ways to apply these tools to both research and policy decisions. Part of the idea of public participatory GIS is about getting input from citizens. But part of public participatory GIS is really meant to be focusing instead on trying to get the government information in the hands of citizens. That if we're going to have a planning board meeting where we're going to talk about whether or not we should allow a private property owner to develop a major commercial property, wouldn't it make more sense for the citizens within that community, especially the residents who live near the site, to be informed, to be able to produce maps that maybe reinforce their opinions, but in some other cases, may even help them understand problem spots, maybe how complex the problem really is. That one of the things we, we have seen in the past is, is governments have held their spatial information fairly tightly. And it, at the end of the day, the citizens made comments that just didn't fit with the situation. So the citizens' participation was quickly disregarded. Now they, they can be more informed. Um, if the developer has access to that information, if the government has access to that information, shouldn't the public as well? It'd be very easy to take the sophisticated land use maps that are developed by the state agencies in New Jersey and reduce them down to very simple graphics in Google Earth so that a nonprofit could do that conversion and put it online two weeks before a major hearing and then have, have citizens look at that data and study it so that when they come to the hearing, they can point out problem spots in the landscape or areas of concern. The center has looked a lot at landscape change. And landscape change can be taken in a lot of ways. But one of the particular things we're concerned about is the rapid pace of development in New Jersey and what the trade-offs are there. That is, as we need to continue to see ways of addressing housing needs that we have in New Jersey, actually identifying what other kinds of land uses we're losing. How much farmland, how much forest land, how much wetlands are we losing? We've developed graphics that show the animation, uh, map out the change from 1972 into the 90s and, and up to the present day. But when you see it in this different perspective, when you see it from above and you see it mapped out, it really focuses you on how it's happening and how what seemed kind of spotty, a farm here and a farm there, it suddenly looks like a wave moving across the landscape. We're going to have development, but if you can have that animation away, that helps you cognize the problem in a new way, that alters how you see this development that you thought of as one farm here and one farm there. And now you can see as a larger pattern. It may also force you to be much more productive in your comments, much more constructive in how you suggest what needs to be saved. One of the things we've put on the website is spatial data that can be downloaded. When we work on a project, a student project in particular, we like to create some really good data that, that can be shared with anyone in the community that might be able to make use of it. And so our website is a source of, of actual usable data as well as graphic maps and other outcomes. When you look at the depth of knowledge that's represented in these materials, I hope that a lot of visitors are really impressed with how much is known about a place that seems so simple, say the Pinelands. 
it seems like it's, it's just one kind of landscape. And one of the maps we have in our gallery shows it broken down into dozens and dozens of different kinds of landscapes, each of which has not only different characteristics, but different needs and different problems. Mm -hmm.